Um, as with uh, every Ignite, it's a roller coaster of emotions here. So uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about Laurel and Hardy next. <laughs> um, it's really no good segue into that, so I just, just, just figured I'd just rip the Band-Aid right off, right? So, Dave Highfield, uh, Laurel and Hardy, a legendary comic team, have numerous fans throughout the world. First team together in 1926, Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy starred in many comedy short and full-length films featuring both silent and talkies. That's a made-up word, isn't it? <laughs> talkies, I like it. Dave Highfield has been a Laurel and Hardy fan for most of his life and who, first introduced, who was first introduced to the team by his father. He did the best to pass an appreciation of Laurel and Hardy onto his sons and now to his grandchildren. Dave is a longtime resident of Carroll County and in retirement is active in the Old Line Statesman Barbershop Chorus, Bonds Meadow Rotary Club of Westminster, Westminster United Methodist Church, and serves on the board of Carroll County Food Sunday. Please welcome Dave Highfield as he enlightens us on Laurel and Hardy. Michael. All right. Five, four. <laughs> Introduced to me by my father, Laurel and Hardy have been a part of my childhood up into my adult time. They are the warmest, most gentle, and funniest team to grace the halls of comedy. Oliver Norval Hardy was born in 1892 in Harlem, Georgia. His, when his father died, his mother moved to manage a hotel, and Oliver spent time sitting in the lobby of that hotel, observing the mannerisms of the guests. He later managed a movie theater, moved to Florida, and started to appear in motion pictures, mostly as the heavy villain and also as a fat boy. His Italian barber used to pat Hardy's cheeks and say, nice, a baby, and that's how Art of Oliver Hardy became known as the babe. Author Stanley Jefferson, later to adopt the name of Stanley Laurel, was born in 1890 in Alverston, England. His father was a manager actor at a small theater named the Hippodrome. Stan joined a British troupe, music troupe where he was an understudy to Charlie Chaplin. He came to the United States with the troupe in 1910, then went back to England, and finally came back to Hollywood. Stan and Oliver as Laurel and Hardy became known as the boys, and they became a team at the Hal Roach Studios in California. Together they made 106 films. I'll mention a few of my favorites. The Battle of the Century is a 1927 silent film classic featuring a gigantic pie fight with over 4,000 pies supplied by the Los Angeles Pie Company. Big Business is another silent film, 1929, that has the boys selling Christmas trees door to door in California, eventually resulting in tit for tat reciprocal destruction. In Perfect Day, a 1929 talkie, the boys try to gather themselves, their family, and their sandwiches, and an old tin Lizzie for a family Sunday picnic with lots of goodbyes and lots of chaos. Birthmarks, another 1929 talkie, finds the boys as musicians trying to catch a train to Pottsville and then trying to get undressed and squeezed into a shared upper Pullman berth. Disorder. The Music Box, 1932, is an Oscar winner with a rising crescendo of mishaps as the boys deliver a piano up a long flight of stairs to be given to a professor who hates and detests pianos. Destruction. In County Hospital, Hardy is hospitalized with a broken leg and in traction, and Laurel comes to visit him because he has nothing else to do. Pandemonium, and Sons of the Desert, 1933. Hardy fakes an illness and pretends to go on a Hawaiian cruise for his health along with Laurel, but they sneak off to a Legion convention in Chicago and their, wife's disco their wives discover the subterfuge. Oh my. 
Stan is known for his upraised hair, also was a master of convoluted language, as when he responded to Hardy once by saying, you don't believe me. Or to a policeman when he said, don't you think you're bounding over your steps? Oliver also had some standard lines. Here's another nice mess you've got me into, or why don't you do something to help me? Through all of their movies, Laurel was known for his comedy, crying, timing, and pace, and Hardy for his tie twiddle, bowler hat tip, and stare into the camera. Always well-dressed and with a phony dignity and dumb and dumber approach to life, and with a quality of innocence, Laurel and Hardy shared beds and pants and hats and troubles. They were and are the best comedy team ever and have left us with a priceless legacy of laughter. Most of their films can be seen on YouTube. Laurel and Hardy say to all of their fans, thank you very much for your support over the years. Thank you for laughing at our antics. Thanks for coming to our museum. And thank you for laughing. And goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>